So LM Studio have just dropped a huge update and it is slowly becoming the best open source software to run private large language models on your own machine. So if you have never heard of it before, LM Studio is a great software that let you download and use different open source models from Hugging Face and start using them in literally six clicks. You don't have to worry about anything. They take care of showing you the best models, showing you if the models can be run locally on your machine, and you can easily manage all of your models in one place so you don't have to deal with it. And all of this is for free. I can't believe it. It feels illegal sometimes to use it. So the biggest feature that they have introduced in this new 0.2 version is basically the fact that we can use two models at the same time. So benchmarking between models for specific use cases have never been easier. You can literally see two answers side by side and decide which model will help you the most in your own use case. And of course, if you can compare two different models, you can compare two different instances of the same model. And we also have another awaited feature, which is basically controlling the format of the output and having it as a JSON, because that will help us tremendously if we want to use that format specifically in some kind of coding or other use cases where JSON is useful. So with that being said, let's jump to my screen and see how we can use LM Studio. So to download LM Studio, you just need to head to lmstudio.ai and then you can choose your operating system and download it. And then installing it is very easy. It's literally two clicks. So we're not going to do that. I already have it on my machine. And once you are going to install it, you will have this home page that is going to be shown to you. Of course, you can read the release notes if you want to do that. Then you will have different models, the most known models that you can start by downloading from here directly. If you are looking for a specific model, let's say, for example, we want Mistral. You can just type in Mistral and click on go. And then it's going to show you all of the best models, the most liked models uh, from Hugging Face. And then if you, for example, click on this model, Mistral 0.1, you can actually open the model inside of a browser and go directly to that uh, models page inside of Hugging Face. And it is sorted by the most liked, which means that people have already used this model and liked it. So it probably is the best one. Here we will have multiple available files. Of course, this is going to be the two bits version. Down here, we're going to find the eight bit download version. And you can see here if I can run this model on my machine or not. So all of this comparing that you have to do between the system requirements that the model is showing and your system resources is basically done by LM Studio and you don't have to do it yourself. So this is a very good feature. And honestly, it saves so much time. So for example, here, as you can see, I cannot run this Mistral. I cannot fully run it on my machine. I can only partially run it on my machine. So if we look for something that is uh, lighter, for example, Tiny Llama, it's literally the lightest we can find you will see that I can fully run it on my machine using my GPU. And here I only have four gigs of VRAM, so it's not so much, meaning that you can also run it on your machine most probably, and it's going to be just fine. And I can run all of them, even the 8-bit one, there is no problem. Okay, so uh, now we have seen how we can uh, search for models. Let's try and download one of them. Let's say, for example, I want to download uh, Mistral. Here it is three gigs, so I can just click on download and then you will see that it is being downloaded in here. And you can see exactly how fast it is going and how much you need to wait. So it is honestly for a free software. I know I am just going with all the details, but for a free software, this is very good. So here the model has been already downloaded. If uh, for example, I want to uh, delete that model. I can just go to my models and then I can go ahead and delete the model that I just downloaded. And it's going to be deleted from your system as well. So you don't have to deal with memory management or with disk management or anything. Okay, so now we have seen how to download models and how to manage them, how to delete them. We can go to AI chat. And here in AI chat, we can choose from the models that we have already downloaded. So for example, I am going to choose the Gemma model from Google. And then the model will be loading so I can use it. Here you can see how much the usage of the model that is going to take. 
Okay, so here I can just start asking whatever I want, like basically ChatGPT or any other model. So here I can ask it, for example, give me Python script to calculate the sum of even numbers between 121 and let's say 589. Let's see how is it going to do. So it has finished. Okay, so here you can see that we basically have a decent code. We have a decent answer. And we basically have so many other configurations that we can play around. If we, for example, seen that the answer is not good enough, or we want some specific answers for some specific use cases. Here we can see the first setting is the preset. If you find this preset already filled, I would suggest not to touch it because here, if I change, let's say the preset from Gemma to Alcapa, for example, you will see that the prompt format will be changing. And if you find it already by default on a specific model, it is already going to be specific to that model. So I would just suggest not to touch it if it's already filled. Here we have a system prompt. If you want it to act as some kind of role or you want some kind of uh, boilerplate instructions for, for that specific use case that you have. So here in the advanced settings, we can see the hardware settings. If you have a good GPU, you can give it more. I would not do so because I am filming right now. So there's a lot of load on my machine, but you can basically go ahead and give it more uh, GPU, it will run so much faster. I've tried it. After uh, the hardware settings, we have the inference, which is so important. Here we have the temperature. So the temperature can vary uh, from zero to one. It's basically how much creativity you want your model to have. So for example, in this case it's 0 0.2, meaning that it is more deterministic and less creative. Uh, you can change that depending on the use case that you have. The tokens to generate, I would suggest to leave that as minus one. So if you, for example, uh, set that to a thousand or 500, it means that it can't go over a certain number. And of course that is not good if you want your answer to be complete. I have already made a video where I explained all of these parameters so you can go back and watch that. But the bottom line is that you can actually change all of these parameters in here without having to deal with code or anything, which is very nice. So here we have the format and we have some suffix and prefixes that's for some specific uh, models not for Gemma, but in general, you are going to want to leave this empty if you want uh, your model to be uh, optimal. The last thing I want to uh, talk about is basically the uh, model inspector that will give us important information like the context length. So this is the maximum tokens that you can have in all of your completion, meaning the input and the output. So it's 8,000. So it is enough to have a decent complete answer. Okay, good. Now we have talked about the chat. So now we're going to go to the highlights of the updates, which is basically the playground. So if you click on playground, you will find this layout in here. And now you can actually select multiple models, not just one model. So for this use case, I'm going to select some tiny models. So I'm going to start with tiny llama. And I'm going to name it tiny llama because that's just an identifier. We don't want it to be so long. And now from here, I am going to choose PHI2 or PHI2, depending on where are you from. And we are going to name it PHI2. We already have the preset for it. And we're going to load that model as well. Okay. So as you can see here, the VRAM usage is 2.7. It's not too bad for two models at the same time. They are, of course, tiny models of 1 billion or 2 billion parameters. So it is not so much. Okay, now let's go ahead and actually start prompting them. Suggest three fun activities to do outdoors. Okay, we can see that the first model has started its answer. Keep in mind that this is a very tiny model. It's literally one of the tiniest, it's 1 billion. So it has been able to understand that it is three different activities and not more. And it has been able to give us the answer. I don't understand why it said insert image below, but we can see that at least we have an answer. And we can see the answer for the second model. So it basically gave us two, not three. But remember, these are really tiny models, so the answers are not going to be the best. I cannot run 
big models on my machine right now because I have so much load happening. So as you can see here, at least they understood the context and gave us answers related to the question. So there were no hallucinations or anything. Okay, now let's go to the second feature that has been added, which is basically the JSON mode. So here in the JSON mode, if the mode is enabled, that means that it will force the output to be a JSON. And if we uh, ask the same question from the models, we are going to see that it is going to give us an answer. So now I'm not running my camera. That is why it is so much faster. And as you can see here, the first one did not recognize the JSON. And that is actually a very important point. If the model is not uh, basically fine tuned to understand what is a JSON format is, it is not going to be able to give us an output. So the model itself should have some kind of JSON training in its data set. Otherwise, it's simply not going to work. For Phi 2, for example, we had a good answer that is a valid JSON with the right answer. Okay, so when it comes to JSON formats, I would say that it, it does not work with every model, especially the, the, the smallest models. Sometimes it does work, other times it does not. The model has to be big enough and it has to be uh, strong enough in order for it to understand that the output should be a JSON. And I have used it for so many models, but a lot of times it did not work. So for the JSON mode, it is not always going to be working. It's better if you go with a custom JSON mode and you show uh, an example of what you want because you're basically fine tuning the model. But as far as like just choosing the JSON mode, it is not going to work every time. So that's an example of how the JSON would work for some models and not others. So for Gemma, not a, a real shocker here because Gemma is not the best of models. And you can see that Phi 2 is actually giving us a really good and valid answer as you can see here, activity one, two, and three. I had to actually stop a recording because the uh, number of tokens per second that were being generated were so low, my machine could not take the load. But after I stopped recording, it basically have went up to 49, which is a very good speed that we can have only on our machine. Okay, so the last cool thing that I want to show you guys is when you come to local server and you choose a model, let's say, for example, we are going to choose Gemma. If you load this model and start server, it will actually start a server and you can use the API of this model inside of all of your projects in your machine. And the best thing about it is that you're literally going to use OpenAI package to do so, meaning that you are going to call this model the same way that you call in OpenAI using the same functions, which is gonna make it so much easier because everyone is used to calling OpenAI's APIs. So here, if we copy the code and we go to VS Code and paste it, we need to add the name of the model, which is gonna be here. So if we can come here and add model equals, and then we add the name of the model, comma, and run this model, you will see that it will introduce itself using rhymes. So here we can see that we are leveraging literally the API that we have here using OpenAI's package, which is so, so easy to do. So you basically have this model and you can run it on any type of project that you have. If you have an Autogen project, a Crew AI project, and you want to have agents that are going to be leveraging this model, it is so easy to do. So, so yeah, if you think that this is an interesting use case and deserve its own video, just let me know in the comments. I will happily make a video about it. And yeah. Thank you guys for watching and catch you guys next time. Peace.